Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Ascot United's race course ground for the Bucks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup Final between Marlow FC and Bracknell Town FC. It may have been playoff heartache for both sides this season. However, they have one last chance to lift a little bit of silverware. First half is coming up. Who is going to get their hands on the trophy? We're going to find out. Okay, here we go. Two, one. Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to Escorts Racecourse Ground for the Barks Bucks Men's Senior Cup Final. It is Marlow FC against Bracknell Town FC. You're currently looking at the Marlow Massive over there on the right-hand side behind the goal. They're getting themselves all excited and ready for this one. Coming up first half very, very shortly indeed. Uh, now, unfortunately, I don't have a graphic for the lineups. I do have the lineups, so I'll give them to you very soon. The players about to come out over onto our left now. As you can see, here come the players now. Bracknell in their traditional red and black tops. Uh, I believe Marlow going to be in their blue home strip, as you can see. Players now coming out. Quick look, actually, uh, at their routes to the final. Let's have a quick look at Marlow, shall we? There it is on your screen. Round one to beat Thatcham on penalties. 5-3. Round two, uh, Maidenhead actually withdrew, so they've got to buy in straight into the quarterfinals where they beat Hungerford Town 3-2. Semi-final, impressive win against Reading, although again it came down to penalties for Bracknell. Their route to the final looks like this, a thumping 8-0 away win at Windsor. 4-0 home win against Newport Pagnell. 2-1 uh, home win against Wickham Wanderers, who uh, incidentally have won the most Bucks and Bucks men's senior cup finals in any other team and uh, an impressive win against MK Dons 2-1 their plays getting themselves lined up now we found the best possible place that we can here at Ascot's Racecourse Ground to bring you this game uh, we're not on the halfway line unfortunately anybody who's ever been to this ground before will know that it is quite a quite a tight stadium here uh, and on the halfway line there's two whopping great floodlights so first half about to come up. Good evening. Hello, everybody. Let's have a look at your Marlow lineup, shall we? Number one is Aaron Watkins. Two is George Eu. Three is Josh Masters. Four is Louis Rogers. 16 is Ben Murley. Six is Alex Salmon. Seven is Janae Bell. Your captain is number eight, Chris Overden. And number nine is David Rovskaski. And number 14 is Toby Paget. Number 17 is Kai Hamilton Oasey. Number 12 is Josh Bourne. 11 is Charlie Samuel. 10, Aaron McLeish White. Uh, 15 is Kelly Simmons. And 18 is Adam Green. Now that's your. Marlow FC team, managed of course by Mark Bartley, your Bracknell team. Uh, number one is Michael Ecott, two is Jack Dean, three is Ethan Burden, four is Olakeda Osu, number five is Daniel Baylis, your captain, six is Ashley Lodge, seven is Joseph Grant, eight is George Knight, nine is Georgian Esprit, then number ten, Daryl Sanders, eleven is Michael Platt, twelve is Ben Harris, seventeen is Magnus Olbersgun, fourteen is Cameron English, fifteen is Sean Fraser, and sixteen is Jack Penton, of course, managed by Jamie McClurg and Carl Withers. As you can see, uh, going through the obligatory photo opportunities here. Do get your comments coming in as well. We can see them as well. So we want to hear from you this afternoon. I'm your commentator, Ian Waterhouse. I'm going to guide you through this one this evening. It has rained non-stop here for the last hour or so. But of course, Ascot uh, United play on the 3G pitch here. So no danger of it being called off. However, had it been on a normal grass pitch, I think uh, it might not have gone ahead, it, such has been the rain. In fact, about three hours ago, we had thunderstorms here in Ascot. Considerably nicer now, though, as you can see. We're expecting a lively afternoon. Over a 1,000 tickets sold for this one. The Bucks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup Final. Marlow FC in blue, taking on Bracknell Town in red. Both sides have suffered playoff heartache this season as well. Marlow reaching the semi-finals, knocked out there. Of course, Bracknell reaching the final of the pitching in Southern Premier Division South, losing out to Truro City. Congratulations to Truro. They're now in the National League South. And we're about to get things underway here. 13 times Marlow have won the Bucks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final. Believe it or not, Bracknell have never won it. Have reached the final, but never won it. A couple of comments coming in as well. Remember, we can see him do bring it in. Thoris Hassan says Kai, first goal scorer. 
why not? You can see your comments. We want to hear from you this evening. If you are watching over at Live Sport now as well, please do hit subscribe as well. We bring you an awful lot of football. Last week we brought you Virginia Water against Met Police in the Surrey FA Senior Cup final. Now we've got this, an absolute cracker and a crunch and tackle by the number two for Brighton. Referee gives the free kick though. Bright start, lively start here. It's going to be raucous, it's going to be loud here. The Marlow fans packed off to our right hand side behind the goal. An early free kick to Marlow in their blue. Both sides reaching the playoffs in their domestic league campaigns. The ball's whipped in, headed away comfortably by the five for Bracknell. Now Bracknell can break. Here is the number 19. He's got a bit of time over here on the left-hand side. He's running. He's going to have an early shot. It's wide left of, left of the post. Bracknell town fans camp behind the goal up there. Keep your comments coming in. We want to hear from you. Your 19, Jordan Esprit there, that was. Apologies if you do hear any uh, adverse language this evening. You probably will at some point. <laughs> it's all fun and games, isn't it? Ball bobbling about midfield now. Shots off. From the stands in front of us, a few hardy souls down in right in front of us with no brollies at all. I must say, I'm camped here with an umbrella right now, hoping in the second half it might ease off a little bit, the rain. Trying to bring you the best possible angle that we can. We were going to go even higher. We've got a fan here as well. <laughs> it's what we like to see. See a camera and you get all excited. Uh, we were going to try it. We were going to be on top of the bench to bring you even higher, but I've got to be honest, because of the weather, it's so bad. Uh, it's really slippy, so uh, for the sake of our cameraman's legs, we don't want to do that. We'll give you the best view that we possibly can. Lovely evening, if it wasn't for the rain. Lily May has commented saying, up the Robins, maybe next season. Finished second in the pitching in Southern Premier Division South. Strong season from the Robins after promotion the season before. So nil nil, early stages of this game, two and a half minutes in. Ball's out for a throw, referee gives it to Marlow. Number nine has it in hand. It's nice to see the Marlow massive over there behind the goal. Are we going to get a long one now? It's going to be short, I think. Slippy conditions in Ascot this evening called the racecourse ground. Uh, if you haven't been here, it's quite obvious. You, just behind the goal there, you can actually see the, the start of the racecourse. That's got racecourse. It is literally main stand is just behind us. So Bracknell are trying to win their first ever Bucks and Barks. Men's Senior Cup number 10 is driving into the box. It's cleared away though by Milo. Referee did well to duck and get out of the way of that one. Do get your comments coming in. We can see them. If you are watching over at Live Sport now, please do hit subscribe as well. We've actually got uh, quite a bit of sport to bring you. So Brighton with it, four minutes into the first half here. If it's a draw at 90 minutes, Mark, or after injury time in 90 minutes, we will go straight to penalties. We did ask them if they would do it down at this goal, this end as well. So uh, fingers crossed that would be nice. If not, don't worry, still get a good view of it. You'll still see it all. We feel nice and safe here, actually. We're just outside the outer perimeter fence and we've got two policemen just off to our left as well. Not for us, of course, but uh, they're here. The ball forwards for Marlow. Good takedown by the number nine. Decides to have a little go. 
kind of worth it as well. In fact, it's taking a deflection, so it goes out from Marlow corner. The Blues Marlow is their nickname. They've had a couple of good cup runs, haven't they? In fact, they even reached the semi-final of the FA Cup back in the 1800s. It was the season that the Old Etonians beat Blackburn Rovers at the Kennington Oval in the final. 1889, I think that was, if my uh, knowledge serves me correctly. Ball's whipped in. It's a good corner in as well, taken by the Bracknell keeper comfortably, though. Hoofs it forward, wants the ball play quick, and it's two against one. If they can win it, they can't. Good defending by Marlow. The two gets it forward. Jinking around. Unfortunately, I don't have a printed out sheet uh, of the team sheets. I've just got them on my phone, so forgive me if I'm a bit slow giving you names. I'm sure a lot of you watching can probably help me out with that as well. Now Bracknell have a chance deep inside the Marlow half. Early stages of this first half, nearly six minutes on the clock. Marlow FC nil, Bracknell Town nil in the Bucks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final here. Chance for silverware for either of these sides. 13 times Marlow have won this trophy. The most recent was in 1994. Bracknell have never won it. Did reach the final in 2004. Lost to Chesham, though. Number two with a high, high clear. It's a bit wild. Still a bit of danger for Marlow to deal with, and they do deal with it. Out for a Bracknell throw, though. Over on the far side. Bracknell in red. Marlow in blue. Couldn't be any easier than that, could it? White shorts, though, for Bracknell. Bracknell do play in a higher division, so probably come into the game as favourites. Shouts have come on Marlow from behind the goal. Bit of a nudge there, referee blows up, always going to be a foul was that one, and number nine for Marlow. It's like, come on, but uh, can't really have too many complaints about that one. It was David Rogowski, I hope I said that right, for Marlow with the nudge there on the Bracknell player. In fact, it was the captain, wasn't it? Number five, Daniel Bayliss. Here is Bayliss now, captain for Bracknell. I think I read somewhere he's made over 140 appearances for the Robins. Good bit of overlapping play. The ball's in the box. It's cleared, though, by the Blues. Lots of support coming in across social media. Keep them coming. Play down on the pitch. Marlow Physio straight over. Let's hope he's OK with that one. But do keep your comments coming in whilst we've got a little break in play. That said, a uh, bit of support coming in. John Elzer and Marlow fan, as you can see, Super Marlow. If you are watching it live sport now on YouTube, please do hit subscribe. It helps us bring you even more live sport. We've got a lot of live football this season. We've brought you the Women's FA Cup. We've brought you the Surrey FA Senior Cup final. That was last week, Virginia Water against Met Police. Met Police winning that one 4-1. This evening, we've got the Bucks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final. Marlow FC versus Bracknell Town. Lots of live football to bring you next season as well. We've got motorsport coming up for you this weekend and the Hamble National Cup semi-finals as well so if you just like your sport live sport now is the place to be we are eight and a half minutes into the first half here of this final and dare I say the weather's actually improving significantly now a little bit ahead of schedule I can almost see some blue sky behind me dare I say it's still raining but a lot lighter than it was now Good crowd this evening, and over a thousand tickets sold. Of course, Bracknell literally just down the road from Escort, aren't they? Literally uh, a couple of miles away. Milo a little bit further, just like the A404, but not uh, particularly too far either for them to travel. Mind you, I don't suppose anyway it's particularly that far to travel in a county cup, is it? Of course, Bracknell still disappointed from that. Play a final defeat to Truro City 3 2. Late, late drama at Bracknell's SP Stadium there. Finished second in the league, Bracknell. Really strong campaign for the Robins. Certainly a team on the up. They'll be uh, very keen to add a first Barks and Bucks Senior Cup final 
trophy to their cabinet as well. They're just trying to probe it forward, aren't they? But Milo are holding firm now. They might be able to break goes out for a throw, though. Crowd just quieting it down a little bit. Ten minutes now into the first half. No real chances yet. Referee gives uh, a Bracknell throw over on the far side. So Bracknell looking to get it forward. Ball sort of camped just inside the Marlow half at the minute. Goes out for another throw to the Robins in red. Marlow in blue. If you are just tuning in, hello, good evening. Welcome to Ascot's Racecourse Ground for the Sparks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup Final. Two seasons. Been one really today with the weather that we've had. Tight ground here at Ascot as well on the 3G pitch, but certainly for the fans, you won't be able to see it on the far side, but there's a fence literally just behind those fans and there's only a few feet space. Marlow trying to chase down the number nine, gets hit, taken. Referee says no foul. And as you can imagine, the Marlow fans are not happy with that one too. Went out, sorry, not a no foul. Goal kick, plays it short. Here's your captain, Bayliss, for Bracknell. That was a takedown as well. The number six for Bracknell committing a foul on the 17 for Marlow. And now the Marlow fans off to our right have really come alive. The opportunity for the Blues to whip one in here. Maybe create a little bit of danger. Here we go. Balls up high, and it comes into the box. It's won by a blue head. Goes out for a throw, though. Unfortunately, was just reaching a little bit too much, wasn't he? This is the number 16 for Marlow. Couple of the Bracknell players want it played short. Keeper says no. It's going to be a long one. He's slippy, very, very wet. Still spitting a little bit here. We've had torrential rain this afternoon. Marlow fans having a cracking time behind a the goal there. Again, apologies, I do have a team sheet, but it's on my phone, and so we didn't get it till quite late. Ball's whipped in for Bracknell. There's nobody there to get it. It's going to go out for a throw. Marlow have started brightly in this game. 13 minutes into the first half, Marlow throw. I'd say if, if anything, Marlow have probably edged it in the opening 13 minutes. Bracknell have gone forward a couple of times, but we haven't had a big opportunity from either side yet. A couple of comments coming as well. Do keep your comments coming in as well. It's nice. I'm commentating on this one. Uh, no co-commentator, so it's nice to see the comments coming in. Faris Hassan says, pitch invasion, win, Marlow, win. <laughs> I like the confidence, Faris. Captain Bird's Eyes says, come on, Robbins, thanks so much for doing this. You are more than welcome, mate. high, goes back, Bracknell win it in defence. A bit of one-two between the keeper and his defender here, Bracknell could be dangerous isn't it, but Milo are happy to just to sit back and 
but and play it back in the forward. Now Bracknell trying to break. It's a high scoop away by the number six for Marlow. Goes out for Bracknell. Throw deep inside the Blues half. We've got the drummer off over to our left. Jinking around now here. Oh, good play. Look at uh, look at the speed from the Marlow. Over on the right-hand side, here's the number nine. He hasn't got many options, to be honest. There's only one Marlow player in the box at the minute. Number 17. He's had a very good game for Marlow. Oh, he's managed to win that one from nowhere. Oh, unfortunately, kind of wasted a little bit there. Marlow asking for the foul. Referee not having any of it. Yeah, the number 17 is Kai Hamilton, isn't it? He is having a good game so far, I have to say. He's looked the danger man. He's been the one with those lung-busting runs for Marlow. Looking like he might be able to create something for the men in blue, the boys in blue. Forward it goes, though. Finds a Bracknell head. Bracknell unable to take control of this game. Marlow had a... Will be 16 minutes into the game. That is definitely a foul. And, uh, I can't help but think if that was a little bit later in the game, it'd definitely be in the book there, the Bracknell player. Just trying to see uh, which number he is. Uh, hoofed it away as well. So I think uh, last warning for the Bracknell number 18. The referee's just having a, a word with him. No doubt saying, so you're lucky. One more of those and you'd be in the book. I think it's George Knight. Again, another opportunity. Second time Marlow have had a free kick from roughly around this ra range in the game. Couldn't really do anything with it first time around. Can they improve this time? <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. He tried to play it back to the keeper, but didn't quite get it. Kai Hamilton was there, as always. Ball goes out. It's going to be a Bracknell throw just on the halfway line. <laughs> Bracknell trying to play it, uh, trying to gain a few yards. Yeah, referee says no, go backwards. There is Knight. Back to his defender. Cagey affair so far in the opening 17 and a half minutes of this game. Bit of a wild scissor kick there, up it goes. Wrestling match going on. Number 19 for Bracknell did well there, managed to get it down. Unfortunately, they've since lost it. And now Marlow have it, but he's got nobody forward for him. Bracknell win it back deep in the midfield here. Number 10 playing it forward out to the right wing. Working it way back into midfield now. Here it goes back to Bayliss, the captain for the Robins. Now to have a chance, it's a wild lash with a left foot high over the bar, no danger at all there. The Marlow keeper says you could keep doing that all day, mate. Little break in play. John Ellis says hi to all those Marlow fans watching in Vietnam. Whereabouts in Vietnam are you, everybody? I, I did a. I spent about six months over in Vietnam, over in Ho Chi Minh. <coughs> Excuse me. Had a bit of a cough over the weekend, managing to get over that one now. So here we are. We are nearly 20 minutes into this game. First half action here at Ascot United's Racecourse Ground. For Marlow against Bracknell, it's nil-nil. Neither keeper has had to make a save of note yet in this game. But I would say in the opening 20 minutes, Marlow have probably just edged it. You 
might not be able to see it on your screen, but you can see the water brollies up. It is very wet here. It's still raining. There's no let up with it at all either. It's not as heavy as it was, uh, but it just doesn't quite stop. There's a bit of blue sky, but there's also some heavy clouds as well. It's a, a real mismatch. I'm pleased to say uh, now it is a lot better than it was about an hour ago. It was absolutely torrential downpour. In fact, I've no doubt that if this was at uh, a grass ground, of course, it's a 3G pitch here at Ascot. Uh, it probably would have been called off. So thank you to Ascot for uh, keeping it on. We do appreciate it. The ball's in. Oh, what a vital header away that was. Bracknell with an opportunity. Here's the number seven into the box. Working his way in. Has a go. Well defended by the 14 for Marlow. Out for a corner for the Robins. Corner coming up. The more comments go. I love this one as well. Gemma D, my fiance, is on the drums uh, for Bratnell. Gemma, I actually um, spoke to your fiance a little bit earlier. I was very excited about the camera. Uh, said, Am I going to be on camera? I said, Yes, you are. So uh, expect a wave from him a little bit later. So, corner for the Robins again. It looks like they're going to aim to play it short, are they? Number six is waiting with him. I think he's changed his mind. Going to try and whip it in. It's slippy out there. Anything can happen. Why not? It's going to be the long one. In it comes. Who's it going to find? Keeper coming out. Can't quite get it. It's flooded with red shirts. And uh, it was a good play by the Marlow play. He ran straight into the back, actually, of the Bracknell player. Referee gives the foul. Come on, the uh, <laughs> We've got a few, uh, you can probably hear a few Milo fans right in front of us as well. It's a great atmosphere. Farris, I think you might, uh, might be right if uh, Milo do go on to win this, there might well be a pitch invasion. It's another free kick for Marlow, halfway inside the Bracknell half. And again, apologies if you do hear any uh, adverse language, but it is football. Everyone here is having a good time. Uh, John L says everybody's inside gone, uh, which of course is Ho Chi Ming, so uh, hello everybody. District 1, it's got a few nice expat bars over there. I actually lived in District 4 for a, for a while. In comes the ball. It's a good opportunity, the ball's up and the keeper has to deal with it, has to put it over his bar. First real big opportunity of the game goes the way of the men in blue and they're going to have a corner. The number 14's running over to take it. Almost first blood to Marlow there. This place will erupt behind that goal. That's all Marlow fans packed right there behind it. It's a wonderful atmosphere. It really, really is. Corner for Marlow. The ball's whipped in high. It's a very good corner. It's away by the number five for Bracknell. Again, apologies. I do have the team sheet, but it's on my phone. Uh, we were very late getting him, so uh, apologies if I'm a bit slow off the mark with the names. The number seven, though, for Bracknell with uh, a jinking run down there, but the number two's got the better of him for Marlow. Right, there's the captain. We remember him, Bayliss. Forward it goes, and now Bracknell worked their way into the box. Strong defending, though, by Marlow, and the danger is clear for now. Oh, maybe a chance there to break for Marlow. It's not going to happen this time. Bayliss manages to keep it in. He's got some running down the left wing there. He's just gone out of shot, but he's still down there. Now it's with the number six. Bit of a poor ball forward. Now it's almost one-on-one -on -one here. Strong play needed by the number nine for Marlow. He almost wins it as well. And the number three for Bracknell comes in and scoops things up. And the keeper's going to take it. Ooh, a low clearance from the Robins keeper.
And now Bracknell with the opportunity. Oh, what a beautiful take that was. Oh, my word. Textbook defending there by the number four for Marlow. But the ball's back in. He has a shot as well. Kim's got to deal with it. Makes the save straight at him. Start to come down a little bit heavier as well. There is blue skies off to our right. Well, unfortunately, not where we are. 25 minutes now into the first half here. It's amazing how quick it goes, isn't it? It's Marlow FC nil, Bracknell Town FC nil in the final here of the Bucks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup. Marlow seeking a 14th Senior Cup win. Bracknell, believe it or not, never won it. Marlow's most recent victory was in 1994. In fact, Marlow played in the first ever final. Oh, bit of a back pass there. Always caught the keeper out. Fortunately, it wasn't on target by his defender, so manages to take it quite comfortably. And we can see your comments, so please do keep them coming in throughout this game. It's a real pleasure to have you with us watching. Uh, we're all over the world as well. We're broadcasting this one everywhere. <laughs> the referee wants to have a little word here. There was a bit of a rash tackle. You won't have seen it. I don't think you saw it on screen, but uh, just over there, I think the referee just going to have a quick chat and just ask things to settle down a little bit here. Any lip readers out there can tell us what they're saying. That would be nice. 27 minutes into the first half. Bracknell throw. 0-0 nil -nil here. It's been entertaining, but a game of a few chances. Marlow with the best opportunity of the game so far, making the keeper have to tip it over his own, over the bar. Did it as well, but now Bracknell looking dangerous when they start to run towards the Marlow box. So far, Marlow have dealt with it every single time. And again, it's one-on-one. -on -one. The number nine up against the captain for Bracknell Bayliss. He's got it. The number seven is driving into the box for Marlow. The 18 clears for Bracknell, though. But again, counter-attack play from Marlow. They, they broke quick there. It's going to need a, a magical moment in this game, isn't it? Remember, if it is a draw after 90 minutes and extra time, we will go straight to penalties. There is no half-hour extra time. Oh, and that was a bad tackle. The foot was high. Uh, this could be trouble. The foot was high there. The number six has gone down for Bratner. He was the one who committed the foul, I think. Now, you just can't do that, can you? Unfortunately, you cannot have that foot high. What is the referee going to do here? He's reaching into his pocket. Trying to see what the referee is going to do. Just seen a, a bad foul, and it's a yellow card. I think it's actually for the Marlow player, isn't it? Yes, it is, in the book. So, a yellow card. Drums on the way now yeah, over to our left. You can hear it. Bracknell with it you know, at the halfway mark. Half an hour into the game.
and again Marlow getting close it was uh, quite a bit of pace on the pass back wasn't there keeper did well to deal with that and not to not fluff his lines And Marlow with it, the number seven, Jinxon. Has he got a left foot on him? If he has, he might have been able to load up and have a go, try to cut back in. But Marlow, again, just looking the more energetic in this first half. We are 30 minutes now into the first half. 15 minutes to go until the break. Nil, nil here. Marlow really getting themselves ahead of steam here. Bratnell getting it forward again, but not very far. Ball now, centre of the pitch, here we go. And look at the space he's been afforded. Tries to overlap it. Tries to get the through ball, can't. It's cut out by Bracknell. Play switch, trying to get it over to the left-hand side. Goes backwards instead, a strong hoof forward. And here's the 11. He's got a bit of space, and unfortunately can't find uh, his teammate, the number 19. Goes straight through to the Marlow keeper, 0-0. Oh, now he's through, surely. Great opportunity. It takes a deflection, it goes over. That deflection was quite dangerous, actually. Had enough pace on it to go over the bar, but again, a sign of Marlowe's attacking intent, and it's going to be a corner to the Blues. Number 14's running over to take it. There's something going to change in this game. You sense something is going to happen sooner rather than later in this one. Ball's in, now it's away. Well, do keep your comments coming in. Remember, we can see them. We do want to hear from you. Bracknell with the corner. Certainly been end-to-end -end in the last 10 minutes or so. The ball comes in. It's high. Oh, it's Bayliss. Who has it? It's... it's uh, not going to count, of course. I think it had already gone out. So uh, are we going to have another corner? Yes, we are. Another opportunity from the other side this time. Corner taken from the left. It's high. It comes in. It's over again. The push has been given. Milo free kick. Well, there we go. Dealt with by Milo once again. It remains nil nil. Milo nil. Bracknell Town nil nil here in the final of the Barks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup. Here, yeah, Ascot United's race course ground, literally just off to our right, is the start of the race course. But if it's a draw after 90 minutes, no 30 minute extra time, it will go straight to penalties. Still a long way to go before we get there. 34 minutes on the clock here. Lovely running, and now. There's two overlapping in the box. It comes in, well taken by the keeper, but it's loose in the box, but there's enough Bracknell players to deal with it. Bit of a barge there. Free kicks given to Bracknell. Number 11 wins it. Attacking intent has really been there, hasn't it? 
Brighton have looked dangerous at times as well. Now it's forward. And now Brighton have another chance to break it in. Here's the number 19. He's almost through. Just loses control, doesn't he? Can't quite switch it between feet. Marlow managed to get rid of danger for now, but Brighton will still have it. Now they can break. And they're sprinting. It is to number 17, isn't it? Kai Hamilton, what an incredible first half he's been having so far. He's been the architect of all the danger so far from Marlow. Somehow still manages to win it. It's a tug back from the 18. Surely that's going to be a booking. Yes, it is. Can't really argue that one. The 18 goes in the book for Bracknell. And Marlow again are going to have another free kick in a dangerous position. Nearly 36 minutes on the clock here. First half, nine minutes to go to the break. It's nil-nil. Are things about to change here at the race course ground? It's a lovely atmosphere. That's the Marlow fans you can hear just off to our right. Bracknell, the large majority of the Bracknell fans off to our left. Certainly the Marlow fans have been the more rowdy. I know we're a little bit further down this end. We give you the best possible view that we can. That's got United's ground for broadcasting out. Unfortunately, there's two massive great floodlights right on the halfway line. So to get the view of it, it's not really a lot you can do, I'm afraid, other than uh, this is the best way to get as much of the pitch without it being uh, obstructed for you. So here we go. Who's it going to be? It's going to be the number three has a go. It doesn't beat the wall, but it's still in the box. It's high. It's a Marlow head that wins it. There's three Bracknell players there. None of them wanted it, though. Now they manage to deal with it, and they get it forward. Drawing, trying to draw a couple of players. Number seven was the furthest forward player for Bracknell. Lovely bit of skill by Marlow. They just look a bit more confident at the minute. We expect Bracknell to certainly grow into this one. Of course, it's been a strong season for both sides, hasn't it? Bracknell finishing second in the league. Marlow uh, finishing third in their league. Both sides making the playoffs in their respective leagues. Marlow losing out in the semi-finals. Bracknell making all the way to the final, but losing 3-2 to Truro City. Still strong campaigns. Both managers will be pleased with the efforts of the both sides throughout the season, but you kind of sense Mr Bartley will be the slightly happier the Marlow manager with his first half, side's first half performance. Oh, and now here we go again. This is... Oh, <laughs> And the number seven is furious. He's in the book as well. We've had three yellow cards in this first half. It's been very vocal, very rowdy. The Jamie's commented again saying, I can't hear the drums that much. Her fiance is on the drums right now. He's got a bit quiet actually over the last 10 minutes or so, Gemma. Marlow fans making a lot of noise, trying to put the Bracknell keeper off, but it's a short one to the number three. Only the number nine for Marlow is in the Bracknell half. I mean, both sides have looked dangerous when they get forward. A 19 has created everything for Bracknell. As I said, unfortunately, I don't have the team sheets uh, right in front of me. Good ball, it's whipped into the box. Oh, and he almost finds it. The 11 turns and shoots, can't get through the Marlow bodies. Marlow against Bracknell Town here in the Barks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final. Nil, nil, 39 minutes on the clock here. Six minutes to go to the break. I imagine there'll actually be a fair few minutes of stoppage time as well. We've had a, a few bookings already early on. You sense this one might boil over at some point this evening. Who is going to lift the trophy and will we need penalties at the end of it? Lily May says Bracknell look like they have playoff hangover. Yeah, they've, they've certainly looked the more sluggish of the two sides, haven't they? <coughs> Excuse me, just can't get into a rhythm, the Robins, in this one. You might have expected them to have dictated this game a little bit more than they have done, but things can change. They will have a spell where they'll no doubt be on top, but Marlow have impressed in this first half. 
Now it goes again, and it's once again, it's that number nine sprinting gives the nudge. It's going to be, uh, oh, it's a free kick this time for Marlow, and another booking. That's our fourth booking of the game. It's, uh, that goes to the captain, Bayliss, for Bracknell. I thought it was nudge, but I think the referee must have given it for a dive. Shouts of Super Marlow from in front of us. Free kick again, and they've had a lot of free kicks from dangerous positions, Marlow. They haven't managed to capitalise on it yet, but can they do it now? Less than five minutes to go to the break, but I imagine with four yellow cards, there's going to be quite a bit of injury time. In it comes, away. And now, can Brattle break? It's three against one, though, in favour of Marlow. Now they're sprinting forward. The odds are levelling up a little bit here. So number 10 with the ball in. Punted away. It's out for a Marlow throw. Close to the halfway line. Is a number nine for Marlow. Manages to keep off the number four. It's been an aggressive game so far. Wouldn't be a huge surprise if there's a, a sending off or two in this one. Three minutes to go to the break. 42 minutes on the clock. Bracknell trying to break with it. It's wet, it's slippy, it's rained all afternoon here in Ascot. He's trying to switch the play, it was a good ball, trying to find Kai Hamilton, the 17 for Marlow. Now it's put forward. Well, that would have been a great ball over to the left wing, had he managed to find it, the ball's up high. And out it goes for a Bracknell throw. Well, it's been entertaining, hasn't it? It's been physical. Both sides have had opportunities. Brandon have had the, the ball in the back of the net. It didn't count because it had already gone out of play. Now Bratner with it, looking to pry and drive forwards, looking to create something in this game. They have been a little bit sluggish in this opening half, close to the break now. Here's a number six. Again, apologies with names, I uh, didn't get the team sheet till late, so I on my phone, so. Now looking to go forward, switching it over. To that left, it's a lovely ball in by the number three. There is a Bracknell player there as well. It's across the face of goal, taken by the Marlow defender, and the danger is clear. Now Bracknell have an opportunity here, throwing deep inside the Marlow half, over on the left-hand side. Here's the number 10, trying to create a little bit of space. Milo have been very good at closing the ball down very quick. This is the number seven, I believe, for Milo. Yes, it is. He's had a very impressive first half as well. As has the number 17 and the number nine. Good bit of defending there by the Blues. They've certainly edged the first half, but they haven't managed to get their noses in front yet. Yeah, 
Excuse me. So, coming to our clock now, 45 minutes has it passed. Uh, fourth official is about to tell us how long we're going to have. No, he's put his ball back down, so he's not going to tell us just yet how long we've got left. I would imagine it's a bit of time. Number nine's just gone down. It's like he's clutching his, clutching his face. Not too sure. I didn't really see a great deal in that, I must admit. I was trying to see what the fourth official's going to signal for stoppage time. <laughs> So, Bratnell, we get things back underway here. No announcement yet from the fourth official. With 46 minutes into this first half, and now Marlow breaking away. Free kick given. Perhaps one final chance for a goal in this first half. It's remained goalless in the opening 45 minutes so far. We're now in injury time at the end of the first half. Light is starting to disappear rapidly, but the rain is coming back down quite heavy again. Do keep your comments coming in at half time, we'll run through them. So uh, tell us what you've made of that first half. We can see them. If you are watching over at Live Sport now on YouTube, please do hit that little subscribe button as well. It makes a big difference to us. We are doing this uh, live and free for you. We'll bring you a lot of live sport. So if you hit subscribe, if you like live sport, we we'll just bring it for you. You don't have to pay anything for it. Just a sub little subscribe helps us. There goes the half-time whistle as well. Marlow nil, Bracknell Town nil. One of the Marlow players still down on the pitch, actually. The physio's just running over. Let's just keep it on them to see how they are. But it is half-time here. Fans just walking through. Uh, our players making their way off the pitch now, as you can see. It is nil-nil at the break. Well, tell us, what did you make of that first half? We've got some uh, comments coming in as well. Gemma D has been commenting once again. Milo are tougher than I thought. They have been very, very impressive in this first half. Lily May went on to say as well, Bracknell looked like they have a playoff hangover. SSA says, Kai, catch me if you can. And number 17 for Marlow, he's had a fantastic first half, hasn't he? Faraz Hussain agrees. Brilliant stuff from Kai. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for getting your comments in. We've got uh, the Marlow fan just making our way through. I wonder if we can get some of them to wave at the camera as they come through. You can see them now, they're going to make their way to the other end of the goal. I wonder if they'll give the camera a wave. Some of them are looking at it a bit nervously. Come on, Marlo, give us a wave. Give us a wave. <laughs> Come on, Some of them are. Well done, Marlo, good first half. We might get a few expletives at the camera, but we'll risk it. Here they come. The Marlow massive over it. Making their way through. They've been very impressive, Marlow, in this first half. The rain is coming down even heavier now as well. Uh, tough old souls, this lot, aren't they? Not wearing coats, any of them. Of course, second half coming up for you live. 
very shortly as well. Don't go anywhere. Stick with us. Let's just watch the fans come through quickly. Nil-nil in this game. Plenty of yellow cards, plenty of excitement, plenty of action. And if you're wondering who we are, we are live sport now. Bringing you a lot of live action. Our Captain Birdside's been in touch as well. Thank you very much, Captain Birdside. I've really encouraged. Thank you for doing this. We need this at all non-blackout games next season. Yes, we do. Uh, we'll be bringing you a lot more live football next season as well. Of course, we are live sport now. If you want to find out a little bit more about us, this is what we do. Yeah, so there we go. That's us live sport now. Please do uh, hit subscribe on our YouTube channel as well. It makes a big difference for us. It really does help us bring you even more live sports. Neil Neil here at the break between Milo and Bracknell in this Sparks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final. Second half coming up for you shortly as well. And Milo certainly had the better of it in the opening at 45 minutes. Uh, Got a few yellow cards being brandished by the referee, so a few players are going to have to watch themselves in this second half. Now, of course, we are here with the Bucks and Bucks FA. We're working with them to bring you this game live and exclusive in very wet and treacherous conditions, I must say. Uh, but if you do want to find out more about the Bucks and Bucks FA uh, and what they do, not just uh, here for the men's senior cup but uh, a lot of other competitions and what they do in the local community to get people closer to football there's a link in the body of this broadcast which will take you straight through to the website do give it a click uh, and it will take you straight through. you can find out all the information you need to about the Barks and Bucks uh, F Football Association and here's a little video as well. We're going to go get ourselves a, a little cup of tea as well for this one. Here's a little video to play for you about the
No. Can you bring in RT and Pete? I'll take graphic then. Right, everybody, welcome back. Here we are. Second half about to get underway here. Nil-nil from the first half. Bracknell first team back out. As you can see, the rain has just not given up. It's been relentless. And it continues. So things about to get underway here. Are we going to have a winner in 90 minutes? Or are we going to have to go to penalties? Bracknell and Oil has been getting in touch. So he prefers a trumpet rather than a drum. I don't know if you can hear, actually. We could probably put the camera over there on the right, on the drummer, just literally behind the goal, where the, uh, the linesman is just checking the net. He was just giving it a good thump there. We know uh, it's the fiancé of Gemma who's watching, so uh, we can uh, zoom in as much as we can. He's uh, just in front of the steward there in the orange. There he is. Uh, good to the word, they are starting to get a little bit uh, louder as well. Uh, Brandon Law uh, Lawyer has been in touch as well, saying thanks for the footage. It's brilliant. Can you please tell the lady with a tent for an umbrella to stand somewhere else, please? <laughs> right, as you can see, players back out now. We're about to get this second half underway. Nil-nil from the opening 45 minutes. Marlow were on top in it, though, and now Bra the Bracknell fans off to a right starting to come alive as well. One look from the referee. Are oh, we going to need penalties? All right, it's in the next 45 minutes. We're going to have a, a winner. Bracknell now shooting from left to right. Marlow from right to left. Marlow kickers back off underway for the second half. Of course, all in blue. Bracknell in their black and red tops and white shorts. forward by Brent. Oh, I wonder what uh, both managers said. Surely Mr Bartley, the Marlow manager, will be delighted with the first half performance from his boys in blue. They are certainly on top for large parts of the game. Had the best chance as well, forcing the Bracknell keeper into just having to tip it over his crossbar. Bracknell had chances as well. In fact, did have the ball in the back of the net, but it had already actually gone out of play, so deflected out for a corner. Don't forget, if you do want to find out more about the Bucks and the Bucks FA, find out what they're doing in the local community for football, there is a link in the body of this broadcasting. Take it straight through. Now Bracknell have it. It's the number seven darting, jinking around. The referees are not having that as well. He's quite happy to let play continue. Outside of the box, right foot shot, takes a strike and has found its way in. It takes a number of deflection. It's Bracknell Town who take the lead. Well, it was a bit scrappy, wasn't it? But it found its way into the back of the net. I'm not sure who actually got the final touch, but right at the start of this second half, it's Bracknell Town who lead 1-0 here. Well, unfortunately, I'm not so sure if that's going to be classed as an own goal or what, because uh, it went through a plethora of bodies, didn't it? I think it ricocheted off a number of players there, so I'm not sure who got the final touch. What I do know, though, is it's Marlow Football Club nil, Bracknell Town FC 1 in the Bucks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final here at Ascot United's Racecourse Ground in the driving, driving range. It's suddenly gone quiet behind the goal that Marlow are attacking. Marlow had the better of it in the first half, but Mar uh, Bracknell have come out of the blocks like absolute thunderbolts here and taking the lead. Well, what did you make it out, everybody? Get your comments coming in. Remember, we can see them. We do want to hear from you.
Sebastian says, how's that not foul? Ref's always against Marlow. Gemma says, yes, Bracknell. And please do like, comment and share. Let's get this seen by as many people as possible. And if you are watching it live sport now, a big thank you, by the way, for tuning in to us on YouTube. Please do hit subscribe as well. As I said, we're doing this completely for free. It uh, enables you to watch the game. We just, just like people to subscribe, not asking for anything. That's it. Watch live sport with us. Uh, you might have seen at half-time our little advert to bring you live motorsport. A lot of live football. Last week, we brought you Virginia Water against Met Police in the Surrey FA Senior Cup final, Met Police winning that one 4 1. We've also brought you the first round of the Women's FA Cup earlier in the season. We brought you Bells and Pitsy against Needham Market Women. It's a historical moment for both ladies' teams. Both time, first time either side have made it to the first round proper of the Vitality Women's FA Cup. We've also brought you Chelsea City Women this season as well. If you like your golf, if you like your motor sport, if you just like your sport, live sport now. Now Bracknell looking to push forward once again. Can they keep momentum going? They look sluggish in the first half. Whatever Carl Withers has said at the break has certainly done wonders, hasn't it? Because Bracknell now look very lively at the start of the second half. Five minutes into it, Bracknell lead, 1-0. Second half action. just for the first time got a clear shot on the outside of the box and okay it might have come in and taken a deflection or two but it went in and it's what matters and Bracknell lead still a long way still plenty of a chance for Marlow to get back into this though in the early stages of the second half here lovely little ball over scoot back now Bracknell turning on a little bit of style finished second in the pitching in Southern Premier Division South only missed out on promotion, losing the player final to Truro City. Marlow finished third in their division as well. They are a step below Bracknell. Lost in the playoff semi final. Both sides had strong cup runs, though. A lot of history. Both sides in the FA Cup as well, actually. Believe it or not, Marlow have actually reached the semi final of the FA Cup. That was back in, I think, it was about 1889. Old Etonians went on to win the FA Cup that year, beating Blackburn Rovers at the Kennington Oval. Of course, Bracknell reached the first round of the FA Cup this season, didn't they? Taking on Ipswich at the SB Stadium, their home ground. Of course, they lost that one 3 0 under the uh, TV cameras. And now Bracknell have it again. Can they add a bit of silverware to a impressive season? Try to get it forward. Comfortably taken by the Marlow keeper, but it's cut out. Again by Bracknell. Now they're starting to show that extra little bit of quality that they may have in the side. And I'm pleased to say, believe it or not, it's actually stopped raining. I don't think it's going to stop for long. In fact, it is still spitting a little bit, so I will keep the brolly up. And now Marlow looking to break. Can they get back into this one? Shout out to Bracknell, the drummer has come alive as well now, Gemma. G Bizzle says, great stream, guys. Thank you. Well, no, thank you. Thanks for tuning in and watching. We do appreciate it. And thanks for commentating as well, by the way. I'm commentating uh, Lonesome tonight. No, no co-commentators is what I'm trying to say this evening. So thank you for keeping me company in the live chat. I really do. I really do appreciate it. And we do obviously read them. Uh, look at them and uh, show them on screen as well. Now Marlow getting the ball into the box. Dangerous cleared for now though by Bracknell. The Robins in red, Marlow in blue if you're unfamiliar with the two sides. Oh, it's a good ball in, the number seven has it. He had a very lively first half, whips it across the face of goal. Kai Hamilton was waiting but couldn't get anything on it and it's out for a Bracknell goal kick. Marlow fans a little bit more lively now, off to our left. We are uh, camped actually inside. Well, we're, we're a lot closer to the Marlow goal here. We're sort of halfway inside the Marlow half, where, uh, where we are. As you can see, we're not uh, by the halfway line. I don't know if anybody's been to the Ascot race course ground. If you have, tell us a comment. What, what do you make of it? 
not the largest ground in the world, but it's a nice bit of character here because we've got the racetrack and the race course right literally just to our right, hence the name, of course, obviously. We've got the golf club, uh, a very short walk from here as well. And uh, the cricket club isn't that far either, so it's a bit of a sports hub within this uh, sort of one kilometre square here. Referee having a quick chat with the number seven for Bracknell now. We're about 54 minutes into this game now. looking to get it forward. The ball's loose, now it's high. In the midfield. A little bit scrappy, now Bracknell managed to clear it. Out for a Marlow throw though, but just inside their own half. Things suddenly got a little bit quieter over here. Marlow fans off to our left. You can probably hear the drum because we are a bit closer to it now. Over to our right hand side, behind the goal that Bracknell Town are attacking. And the throw's now been given in favour of Bracknell. I'm not too sure why. Was it, was it a foul throw given? Surely not. Not at this level. Bracknell always says thanks for muting the drum. Uh, it's not as... <laughs> but he has gone quiet now. In fact, he's gone quite quiet. All in. Uh, let's just have a quick look at some of the comments. Sebastian's been in touch. Uh, thank you for getting in touch, Sebastian. Good to see a good crowd. We've had good crowds at Marla this season. Average of 104. Been great atmosphere. That is a solid crowd, actually. Yep. Yeah. Faraz is back as well. Great to have you back, Faraz, for the second half. Let's go off with a Marla equaliser. Hey, why not? Maybe. Anything can happen. So Marlow, Neil Bracknell, one. We are about 56 minutes into this game now. Marlow trying to hoof it forward. I tell you, he needed to catch that because the 14 was away for Marlow. And they're not happy at all. I think he uh, actually did he want advantage being played for number four. I think he might have wanted advantage. Again, referee's having a chat with the number seven. That's the second time. In quick succession, he's going to have to have a quick word. Quite a few yellow cards handed out. Four yellow cards in that first half. Wouldn't be a huge shock to see a red coming out at some point in this game. <coughs> Excuse me. Forward it goes. All the boys in blue. The ball's up. It's in the area. Oh, it was, uh, it was number seven with the left footed volley there. Ricocheted off the Bracknell player, though. Out of danger for now, but Marlow still have it. Now it's out for a corner. <coughs> so the Blues with a corner. Can they create something? We've seen quite a lot of corners in this game and free kicks. Nothing's come of it yet. The goal came from open play, didn't it? A strike, right foot strike from the outside of the D. Ricocheted off a number of bodies, just found its way into the back of the net to hand Bracknell that lead just a couple of minutes into the second half. Now Bracknell looking to break. There it goes down, free kick for the Robins. Now the drummer's back. Says Bracknell will get another goal in a minute. 
And it's coming in, and they might as well. They're free. Oh, how did he not put that one in the back of the net? Gone wide. Left of the post. I thought he had time as well to do something with it and bury it, but couldn't. Still lead, though, to Robbins. 1-0. G. Bizzle's been back in touch with the drummer, Moji. Yeah, you can probably hear it off to our right. The drummer is back. They sing to Bracknell Town from behind the goal off to our right. They're enjoying themselves now. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We really do appreciate it. I know we keep asking, but please, if you are watching it live spot now on YouTube, please do uh, just hit that little subscribe. It really helps us bring you live sport. We are, of course, doing this completely for free. Oh, hit and subscribe helps keep us going to bring you even more live football. I know we're almost at the end of the season. Uh, we're going into next season, we're looking to bring you a lot of live, I should say lower tier football, as we know, Premier League, Championship, League One, League Two, locked out by Sky. I actually uh, myself work as a commentator in the National League with Boreham Wood, Wildstone and Barnet. Uh, it is a real pleasure. I do love my uh, lower league football, I have to say. Fouls given, favour of the Robins. So Marley's opportunity to attack has gone now. I can see a bit of movement actually on the Bracknell bench. I don't think we're too far away from a couple of substitutions for the Robins. Bracknell Oil says, I actually spoke to the vice captain only a couple of, uh, only last week, and he said the drum actually puts them off. So, a big game here Barks Bucks men's senior cup final. Bracknell seeking their first ever title here. Over it goes, it's going to come right in front of us actually. In front of the fans are going to scoop it up. It's going to be a Marlow throw. Marlow have won this 13 times, but not since 1994. A lot of their, lot of their victories actually came early on in the season. Uh, now I'm trying to see, it looks like we've got uh, a Bracknell change going on here. Unfortunately, as I said, like, we weren't handed, I didn't get the team sheets until quite late and uh, only on my phone and with the rain, it's been quite difficult to get them out. Well, I must say, I think it has actually stopped raining for a moment, so I'm going to try and put the brolly down for a little bit. Now, for the first time in this game, I don't have to hold a brolly. It's taken a long time, but finally, <laughs> it's actually uh, dry at the minute. So I can tell you the number seven is coming off for Brantley. And I tell you something, he just walked right in front of us. He's shaking his head. He's not happy. Many thanks for your support. Uh, I don't know if you heard that on the PA as well. The attendance this evening, the crowd, any guesses? Tell us. I'll tell you what it is very shortly. Any guesses? What do you think tonight's attendance is here at Ascot United's race course ground? I wonder whilst there's a little break, if we could just pan the camera all the way around the stadium just to give people a quick look to see uh, the amount of people we've got here. Of course, you can't quite see tucked down to the left, but I can tell you it is rammed with people absolutely everywhere. So comment, how many people do you think are in here? Uh, you don't win anything. Well, I'll tell you what, if you, if you get it right, you can have a Live Sport Now sticker if you want. <laughs> if you get it within 10, you can have a Live Sport Now sticker. No, you can't say fair in there. Or just do it for fun, you know. So get those comments coming in. A couple of minutes, I'll reveal the exact attendance. It's just been read out. If you heard it on the PA, then you should all get it right and you'll get a sticker. Oh, good cut away. Bracknell winner. Oh, what a crunching tackle. I'll tell you, he won the ball, though. 
It looks wild. Shouts the Marlowe fans are going ballistic there. They wanted the foul on their player. Now it's starting to get a little bit lively. It's starting to get a little bit feisty here. Lily May says 850. Gemma D says 1,200. You're both wrong. Neither of you are a million miles away, though. You can have another guess if you like. So if, I'll tell you what, if you get it within 50, you can have it. One more guess. Comedy, what's the attendance this evening? What do we think? Keep me entertained. Sebastian says 1,201. Wrong way, Sebastian, I'm afraid, mate. We are about 65 minutes into this game now. Bracknell Town leading it 1-0. That goal a couple of minutes after uh, into the second half. Strike from outside the box. Ricocheted off a number of players and found its way into the back of the net to hand the Robins the lead. Gemma says 9.50. Oh, Farris says 7.20. Bracknell says 8.78. Lily May says 9.70. Uh, Lily, you are the closer you are within 50. The exact attendance is... In fact, I'm going to pop it on screen for you all. That's your attendance this evening. 1,007. So after about three guesses, Lily May, you, you were within 50, so I'll give you that. G. Bizzle says 12,352. <laughs> I tell you, it's been that loud, it feels like it. Of course, Ascot United's race course ground is uh, quite compact, it's quite tight, isn't it? So uh, at times it does feel like that, yes. <laughs> uh, Gemma, yes, you, you can guess as many times as you like. You, you could do. You were right, you were right. Absolutely. Uh, looks like we just uh, marked no substitution as well, uh, whilst I was getting all excited about what the attendance is this evening. So we have had a change for Milo again. Unfortunately, like I said, team sheets, uh, we only got them on a, a scrappy bit of paper uh, before the game. Normally we get it, uh, we get them all quite through. By the way, if anybody else is interested, uh, score coming through is Real Madrid 1, Manchester City 0. I hope I haven't ruined that for anybody, by the way. And Marlow now breaking into the box, the number nine. Good strong tackling in the end. Now the free kick is giving Marlow's way just to the left outside of the box. And Milo, the Blues, are going to have a golden opportunity here. They've had a few good free kicks. I'm loving watching all the comments come in as well, by the way, everybody. Thank you for getting involved. <laughs> it's uh, very, uh, a lot more enjoyable for me as well. I mean, of course, it's always enjoyable. What wouldn't be enjoyable? We are literally right here. I'm stood right behind the camera uh, commentating on this. At the end of the game, we give you a little wave. But free kick for Marlow. You can hear the drum going off, the Bracknell drum off to our right. Marlow have an opportunity. The Marlow fans camped right behind the goal. It's whipped in. Oh. I thought it had gone in then, but it's uh, gone behind the goal. It's going to be uh, a corner for Marlow. It can be quite confusing, can't it, seeing it at times? It's going to be taken from the left-hand side. Not quite, Sebastian, I'm afraid. It looked like it goes in. It was actually behind the goal, believe it or not. It does look like it was in right now. The corner's whipped in. Keeper confidently takes it for Bracknell. And now Bracknell have it. Inside their own half, working their way up to the halfway. No, it's a big hoof forward. The number three up against the 17 for Bracknell. I thought keeper was going to come out. A little bit of confusion at the back for Marlow, but they just about managed to deal with it and get it forward. Can they break? No. Bracknell snatch it out into the midfield. The 11 puts it forward. A 
Uh, Marlo managed to deal with it. However, they've been hassled and harried. The referee says no foul. Bracknell managed to keep it in and retain possession. Trying to find some space. They've been tight to them all game here, Marlo. Now the ball's in. Oh, and the number three just about gets a foot to it. But the 17 still has it for Bracknell. Oh, it's a bit of a sloppy ball forward. That's a lovely ball forward. The six is sprinting into the box. He's just getting himself a little bit tangled in his own legs. But look at the pace of the number six for Bracknell. He's working his way all the way back. It was only a moment ago he was in the Marlow box and somehow he's managed to win it back. Incredible. I even felt compelled to give the guy a round of applause for that one. Now the number three again gets the head. Does great job there to deal with that one. Out for a Bracknell throw right in front of us. Uh, Farris, good question. The substitute I will try and find out for you. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to see the fourth official from here. Uh, and uh, as I said, team sheets were a little bit sketchy. They were written and sent to us on WhatsApp uh, in pen. And as you can imagine, handwriting was rather, uh, dare I say, questionable. But there we go. Uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. Marlow into the Bracknell box, so can they create something? Oh, he almost had a chance to volley it then. It's the number 15 over there. Looks its way off to the left. It's going to be a Marlow throw deep inside the Bracknell half here. We are about 71 minutes into this game, less than 20 minutes to go. Of course, there is no extra time. It would go straight to penalties if we finish at a draw after 90 minutes. Still time for Marlow to get back into this one. They've looked dangerous, Marlow, throughout this game. They've proved tough opposition despite being playing in a lower division than their rivals. Finished third in the league, Marlow. Oh, when it came. We're going to have another chance. Marlow getting ever, ever closer, aren't they? You get what you sort of deserve in football, don't you? But you have to say, Marlow do deserve a goal. They have a shot straight, the keeper. It stays 1-0 to the Robins. Marlow playing Ishmael in League South Central Division, playing the Alfred Davis Memorial Ground. If you've ever been there, tell us what's it like. I've, I've never actually been. 1879 was the first ever Barks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final. Marlow were in it. Uh, they lost to Reading 1 0. And Reading under 23s are actually the holders of this to beat Ascot 4 0 in last season's final. Goes out, takes a deflection, it's a corner for the Robins. Well, Ferris has asked is uh, Kai Hamilton on the number 17. Uh, yes, he is, he's over the far side. So, corner for Bracknell. And it comes, it's a good corner, it's away from the keeper. And they're high, the ball's loose in the box. Oh, and I tell you, the number seven had to deal with it. He had to get a foot on it. I don't think the keeper thought it was going wide, but it was caught off guard a little bit there. Kai Hamilton, well, he's a, the number 17. He's uh, had a very, very good game. He joined following a spell at Chertsey Town. And the ball's up again. 
It's like a push has been given, and it's a Marlow free kick. Kai Hampson also had a stint with Met Police, actually, as well. Aaron Watkins in goal for Marlow this afternoon. Also played for Thatcham Town, Binfield, Reading City and Flackwell Heath. There he is. Michael Ecott's in goal for Bracknell this evening. He's kept 34 clean sheets and 78 appearances for Bracknell. It's pretty impressive going, huh? I also started a centre-back at Hounslow. Thank you very much. Bracknell Lewis has asked us, what's the best game you've watched this year? Ah, OK. Uh, good question, actually. Um, do you know, that's a really good question. Uh, I, did, I did the Barnet v Notts County game a few weeks ago in the National League. It actually finished 1-1 and sort of almost ended Notts County's chances of winning the National League. Of course, Macaulay Langstaff netted for Notts County, as he's done all season. We actually did Chelmsford City women against Bowles and Pitsy Ladies Reserves, which was, I think it was 3-2 to Bowles and Pitsy Ladies Reserves. It's, I think it was the first time they'd actually ever beaten Chelmsford City. It was a really good game at the Melbourne Stadium in Chelmsford. That was quite a memorable one. I believe it or not, uh, I think I've done... 21 games this season, and I haven't had one nil-nil. Andrew says to back substitute is former Marlow winger Cameron English, number 14. There you go. Thank you for that, Andrew. Also uh, played for Hungerford Town, Cameron English. Incidentally, Hungerford Town is who Marlow beat in a quarter-final to get here. Now, Bracknell have it. The referee points for a free kick for Bracknell. If you missed, actually, at the start of the uh, show, I suppose, uh, game, we did show the uh, on-screen graphic of the route to the final for Marlow to beat Thatcham Town. It was 3-3 after extra time, and uh, it was actually Marlow winning it 5-3 on penalties in the second round for Marlow. Uh, Maidenhead United withdrew from the competition, so uh, they got a bye into the quarter-final where they beat Hungerford Town 3-2 in the semi-final. They actually beat Reading 2-2, uh, though. Went to penalties, that one 5-4, a little bit closer. But Marlow winning twice on penalties. So if this does go to a penalty shootout, you've got to fancy them. Uh, we've got substitution going on over for Marlow on the right-hand side. If we just put the camera over by the dugout, we've got substitutions going on for the Blues. I think number seven has just come off. He has, and it looks like the number 10 is coming on for Marlow. Uh, Bracknell's route to the final uh, was a little bit more straightforward, actually. Uh, they beat Windsor 8-0 in round one. Second round, they beat Newport Pagnell Town 4-0. And funny enough, that's who Ascot are playing, I believe, in the Vars final coming up at Wembley. Uh, a quarter-final, impressive 2-1 win against Wickham Wanderers, and a semi-final to beat NK Dons 2-1 as well. Forward it goes. Bracknell Town. It was, it was the number 14, actually, wasn't it? Uh, who they call Johnny English. Couldn't really do a great deal with it. Now the number nine for Marlow has it on the right hand side. He's driving into the box. He's got number four for company. Just runs out of steam. What's the ref going to do? Goal kick to Bracknell. We are nearly 80 minutes into this game now. We've got just over 10 minutes of normal time left to go. Stays like this, Bracknell Town will be lifting their first ever. It's quite hard to believe, isn't it? But it'll be their first ever Barks and Bucks Men Senior Cup final victory. As I said, Marlow have enjoyed 13 successes, most recently coming in '94. Sorry, Marlow FC, isn't it?
Let's just try to see who the number 10 is, actually. Who's just come on for my Unfortunately, I don't have it down on my sheet, so uh, apologies about that. <coughs> Excuse me, I wonder if uh, anybody from Marlow uh, watching can tell us, actually. So here we go. Corner for the boys in blue. Ten minutes to go. Time running out for Marlow, but still enough in it to get back into this one. All it takes is a goal. I have to say, Marlow might fancy their chances in the penalty shoot without already having come through two to reach the final. It's high and it's long and it's a little bit of a waste, if truth be told. He did manage to keep it in, though. And now Bracknell managed to get it. Can they break? Can they counter-attack? Yes, they can. Oh, it's another 17. Beautiful plays into the box. He's trying to find his man. Oh, and number two there with an absolutely brilliant touch to take it away. Out for a corner, but that made the difference. The Bracknell player was overlapping. It would have been the simplest of tapping, surely. He had to deal with it and did. Could have gone into the back of his own net, but didn't. Brilliant defending by Marlowe. Corner though for the Robins. There we go, G Bizzle says Marlow tennis for McCracken. Thank you very much, uh, G Bizzle, I really appreciate that. As I said uh, a few times, unfortunately, team sheet uh, is lacking this evening. The rain has stopped, I'm pleased to say, as well. The ball's in, it's ahead. Oh, and it's just wide at the post. It was so close as the PA system to our left just decides to blow up. Oh, Bracknell going close again. The drum is back as well, everyone. Got the two uh, policemen just off to our left. I hope they've enjoyed the game. Long kick goes forward. Back into the Marlow half, goes out for a throw. Marlow throw. Don't forget, at the end of this game as well, don't disappear because we will be bringing you the trophy presentation as well. Who is going to have their name on it? There's still eight minutes or so to go in normal time. He's offside, linesman flag has gone up. It was a wild lash anyway. Had it somehow managed to find its way into the back of the net, it wouldn't have counted. It's been a spirited performance from Marlow, hasn't it? They really were on top in that first half. Unlucky, really, not to get a goal, but they didn't get a goal. And as the players came back out for the second half, it was Bracknell who were on fire. Two minutes into the second half, managing to get the strike away just outside the D. Ricocheted off a number of players and found its way into the back of the net. And so far, that has been the difference here. It's Marlow FC nil, Bracknell Town FC 1 in the Barks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final. We are in to the last seven minutes or so of this game. You can see the, the steam coming off the players. Yeah, it's uh, early May, isn't it? We were expecting <laughs> perhaps slightly nicer weather than we've had. I mean, it is mild. It's not cold by any sense of the imagination, but it's just been so wet all day. In fact, this is the driest period we've had over the last six, seven hours. As the game kicked off, you probably saw we were decked under brollies. I'm pleased to say it has stopped raining now. Imagine the pitch has been very slippy here. 
at Ascot United's race course. Great. A big thank you to Ascot United as well for hosting the final here. Leaders at Slough Town last year as Reading under-23s went on to lift it. Uh, Bracknell just keeping possession here, looking dangerous. Number 12 runs into the box, trying to get on his left foot, can't. Well, does, but the block by Marla. Too many bodies in the way. Somehow, number two just keeping himself on side. There was no Bracknell player there inside the box. It was overlapping far on the left hand side. The Milo player has to deal with it and does. Oh, do you know what G Bizzle says? Is the bloke in the black North Face puffer and black cat in front of the camera the Dorking gaffer? Uh, no, uh, but I can see the likeness. <laughs> Funny enough, we were at Dorking Wanderers last week, we were at their home grounds for Virginia Water against Met Police. Uh, that's the home of the Surrey F8. Good season Dorking have had, actually, haven't they? Managed to stay up in the National League. Everybody watching as well, uh, Marlow on the ball now. They, they managed to get the ball in, headed away by a Bracknell head. I think it's probably going to go out for a corner, is it? Yes, it does. So opportunity for Marlow here with about four minutes left to go. Yeah, I could definitely tell you the chap in the North Face Puffer is, is definitely not the Dorking manager. Uh, and no disrespect to the chap down the front of us. I'm sure he's a really nice chap, but I don't think the Dorking manager would be too happy <laughs> with the resemblance either. <laughs> And the ball's whipped in. Shouts of handball from the Marlow players, waved away by the referee. There was no danger there, you can tell, because even the Marlow fans didn't get particularly vocal about it either. It works its way all the way back to the number one for the Blues. Uh, everybody in the comments section, by the way, uh, do tell us, uh, are these the, the first teams you support? I know you're Marlow and Bracknell fans. Do you support any other teams? Tell me, who are they? For my sins, I must admit, I'm actually a Leeds United fan, uh, which has been quite miserable this season, to be brutally honest with you. Looking forward to uh, championship football next season. But tell me. Now the drum is back. Bracknell fans in full voice here. Time is now running out for Marlow if they're going to take this game to penalties. They trail 1-0 in this one. Looks like Bracknell are making a substitution as well. We'll pop the camera over on the bench. It's the number 10 coming off, the number 16. I think it's the number 16 coming on. G Bizzle's a, a Fulham fan. He did his good the other day. Taking Dan James from us as well. Looks like he's going to sign permanent from you as, for you as well, uh, Dan James. Former Leeds winger, now at Fulham, on loan, but soon to be there permanently, I think. Hayley Fowler is a Marlow and chair boys, of course, Wickham Wanderers. Now Marlow looking to put this game to bed. He sends one more goal from Bratnell, and that will be that. Whilst it stays 1-0, though, Marlow's still got a whiff of a chance, haven't they? They're still in this one. Bastian says Marlow and Reading. Now Bracknell breaking into the box. It's going to go out. And it does. And it's a Bracknell corner late in the game. Second half here for you. Bracknell leading it. Sebastian's a Marlow and Reading fan. Yeah, I feel your pain, Sebastian. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be playing you in the championship, will we? So that's a bit of a shame. Quite enjoyed going up to the Mad Stad for Reading Leeds games before when we had that long period in the championship ourselves. John El says, most of my last Spurs fans, a few delinquents who follow Chelsea and Arsenal. 
Right, the ball comes in now, surely. Oh, I thought it was whipped right across the face of goal. It was millimetres away from going in, just the slightest of touches, and that would have killed the game off for sure. We've got about a minute or so left on the clock. I don't know if the fourth official is actually going to put his board up to let us know how much injury, injury time we're going to have left at the end of this game. He didn't at the end of the first half, so we're, we're sort of guesstimating here. But I can tell you, according to our clock, we are uh, about to come into the 90th minute. A good ball forward. Now Marlow, is this the last chance for them? They've got to get possession of the ball, haven't they? But Bracknell have been so professional. What a touch, what a take. I'm not too sure he even knew a great deal about it. The free kick is given in a dangerous place for the Robins. This could well be the moment that Bracknell Town create a little bit of history for themselves and win their first ever Barks and Bucks Senior Cup final. Time running out now for Marlow, and they've got to defend deep in their own half. A free kick from Bracknell Town. In it comes, it's on target as well. The keeper has to deal with it. It was low, difficult bounce, knocks it away for a corner. Claire Clark says, great season for the Robins. It has been a great season for Brighton. Of course, finishing second in the league. Sadly, losing out in the player final to Truro City. But it looks like they are going to write their name on the Barks and Bucks Cup. However, it's not over yet. We are literally deep into injury time in this game. Their head is up. The number five, the captain, Bayliss, trying to deal with it. It's high, keeper's got to deal with it, takes it. One last chance maybe for Marlow here. They're going to have to get on with it. They're shouting for it. The bench over there are absolutely screaming. They want it played quick. Keeper's a little bit slow with it and Bracknell managed to hoof it forward. Time is almost up now. I'm looking to the referee, expecting to blow his whistle at any moment. Don't forget, at the end of the game, don't disappear either. We are going to be bringing you that trophy presentation as well, so stick around. Oh, I thought that was a full-time whistle for a minute. It's not, but it's a free kick for Bracknell, and they are just eating away those few precious seconds that remain here. It's almost up, and it's Bracknell Town who look like they're going to get the job done. It's been a, a tough evening's work for them, though. Marlow have been more than worthy opponents. They've really impressed me, Marlow. It works all the way through. It's not over yet, though. as we say. Here we go. They've got to get a move on. They've got to get this forward quickly. Oh, nice turn by the 11 for Marlow. Now he's working it forward. The ball's in the box. He's almost through the number nine. If he could have just got a touch and kept it down, he would have just had the keeper to beat. Bit of a poor first touch. Takes it through in the Bracknell keeper and the Bracknell fans breathe a huge sigh of relief. Well, 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 Marlow have certainly had a few opportunities in this game. Two golden opportunities, really. They should have had at least one, you sense, in the match. We're in injury time now. now I wonder if Bracknell are just going to take the ball down to the corner flag. They are just going to run it down. Oh, no, they're still going to go for it. Uh, rather, disappointingly, give it straight back to... A Marlow play puts it forward. 
Good strong head away. I don't know how much injury time we're going to be playing. Uh, Brighton or Loyal, we, we would love to get onto the pitch and uh, interview. We managed to last time against Virginia Water Met Police. Uh, unfortunately, because of where we are, we are quite away from being able to get over two fences. Now Bracknell have a golden opportunity. Do keep up to date though with the Barks and Bucks uh, social media channels because um, the, you will be able to hear from the managers. It just uh, unfortunately won't be immediately from us after the game, but stick around for the trophy presentation. Though don't disappear, you'll see the moment that that trophy is lifted. Uh, is it going to be from Bracknell? Is it going to be Marlow at the minute? It's Bracknell's hands are on it. But all it takes is one little slip up, doesn't it? It's getting a little bit tense, it's getting a little bit nervous. We are now deep into injury time. The Bracknell with it. Bit of a wrestling match. Ref raves it away. Bracknell won a penalty. Ref says no. I keep saying it's one last chance for Marlow, isn't it? But they've had about three or four last chances here. Not been able to do a great deal with it, but now the ball is forward, still with a blue shirt. The number 15 sprinting, running away. Oh, all that hard work has just gone to waste by the number 15 for Marlow. And there it is, there is your full-time whistle. Congratulations to Bracknell Town. They are your 2022-23 Barks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup champions. Little Flair has gone off on the pitch over to the left. Little put the camera on it. Little oh, yeah. <laughs> stewards have gone onto the pitch. Uh, Farris, if you're still with us, uh, you did say there might be uh, a flare or something going onto the pitch. There it is. Now, believe it or not, actually, the uh, photographer just off to our right, there was a big cheer. You might have heard it, it wasn't because Bracknell have just won. Uh, it was actually because the photographer, as he went over the fence, fell over. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Uh, people are leaving in their drives, but do stick around because we are going to be bringing you the trophy presentation very shortly. What a game it was. What do you make of that? Farez is still here. Th thank you. Can I just say, everybody, uh, as well, uh, Sebastian's asking why the flare is blue, because uh, it's Marlow fans off to the left. Uh, and I must give a lot of credit to the Marlow fans. we put a camera on you can see they're sticking around. They're still here. They want to applaud their team off. They've been wonderful, as have the Bracknell fans as well. It's been a, made a really, really great atmosphere. 1,007 people have packed themselves into Ascot United's racecourse ground for this Barks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final. Won, of course, by Bracknell Town. 1-0, tight affair. There is the trophy as well. It has been great support. It's been great support from both teams. Marlow players will just bring the uh, camera back round to the Bracknell side because uh, the Bracknell players are now just coming up to the, uh, to the drummers and the Bracknell support here. Uh, we go straight into the presentations actually as well, so uh, no dilly-dallying around. Stick with us, don't go anywhere, stay with us. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for tuning in. Do you know what, everybody watching, I hope you're still here as well. Can I just say, uh, everybody who got involved as well, 
you know what? I feel like we formed a little bit of our own little group here, our own little football group. I kind of, kind of don't want this to end, really, everybody. Big thank you for uh, tuning in. Really, really, hugely, hugely appreciate it. Don't go anywhere. Presentation is coming up. Well, what did you make of that game? Credit to both sides. Milo were fantastic, weren't they, in that first half? But that goal just... As the second half got back underway from Bracknell, a strike from the outside of the D, ricocheted off a number of bodies, found its way into the back of the net, and that was enough for Bracknell Town to win the Barks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup. The first ever Senior Cup triumph, it's quite hard to believe, isn't it? We've got a few more celebrations going off to our right as well with the Bracknell players. Let's bring the camera around, let's put it back on the victors, here they are. Please. And Bracknell now making their way to the centre circle where they will be about to lift the trophy. William McKnight's going to lead the presentations. And the first presentation is for the man in the match, nominated by the chairman of the grassroots football board, John Martin. And that goes to Blackpool's number five skipper, Daniel Bayless. Well, I can tell you as well that uh, Daniel Bayless, the Bracknell captain, the number five, has been named man of the match, or player of the match as it's called these days. Well, congratulations to him, the number five. He'll be the first to get his uh, little pot. I don't know if they still do champagne, do they, or, or his medal. But uh, there you go. Mr Bayliss, the captain for Bracknell, he's your player, your official player of the match. So it may have been... The referee, Gareth Bickard. The assistant Simon Harbury and David Pilling, and the fourth official Thomas Kelly. Now, thank you for all the nice comments as well about the stream. We're really pleased uh, you've enjoyed it. So we do try and try and make it entertaining. We try and make it engaging as well. This is about uh, you guys as much as it is about what's happening out on the pitch. It really makes my life a lot easier when people do get involved in the stream. So thank you to everybody for commenting as well. You know who you are, uh, and uh, you know it makes a big difference from our side of things as well. Stick around and we're going to see Bracknell Town lift that trophy very, very shortly. Can both teams get a bit closer, please, to the presentation table? So the PA announcer here, I think he's getting a little bit stroppy with the teams. Yeah, getting closer. A losing team in tonight's final. So Ray Gallant has set the big round of applause for Marlow Football Club. Uh, Brandon Lloyd's just asking, have, have Marlow stayed out for the presentation? Yes, they have. They're just off to the left-hand side. They're about to come into your shot now. Um, they are going to pick up uh, little medals as well. So congratulations to Marlow. I'll tell you something. Uh, they have really played their part in this. They really have deserved to be here uh, and they put up a great, great fight. It's my first time actually watching Marlow FC. Uh, it won't be my last either. I've really enjoyed seeing them play and uh, great support that they've had this evening as well. Unfortunately, as the PA announcer did say, there does have to be a loser. You have to have a winner, of course. Uh, but if there's, uh, if there's the, how do we say, a good way to lose, uh, Marlow have certainly done themselves proud this evening and can go back the short trip, of course, to Marlow with their heads held up very high indeed.
So Marlo just uh, getting there. I never like to call them losing. Let's call them the second place medal, shall we? And here we go. Bracknell Town FC, they're about to receive their little medals and then they will be lifting that trophy very shortly. There is the trophy. Here come the players now. They're going to go behind the uh, County Cup final winners board there. Nicely put up by the Barks and Bucks FA. Don't forget, if you want to find out more about the Barks and Bucks, there is a link in the body of this broadcast. It will take you through. And then to everyone watching at Live Sport Now on YouTube, big thank you. We're live across Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, uh, and LinkedIn as well. Uh, my LinkedIn, I'm your commentator, Ian Waterhouse, if you're watching this. And you're on LinkedIn, connect with me. Clearly, if you're watching this, we obviously share the same interests. So uh, who knows? So there are the Bracknell players now collecting their medals. Not long to go. The trophy will be lifted high into the Ascot sky. And Bracknell put their name on a trophy for the first time. That winning feeling for Bracknell Town. Oh, Claire Clark says, it's finished Real Madrid 1, Manchester City 1. Thank you very much for that, actually, Claire. I haven't checked my phone for a while, so uh, interesting to see. Not that I support other clubs, but, uh, you know, we all love football, don't we? Once again, your winning team, Blackpool. So here we go. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Bracknell's season may have ended domestically in heartache in the league. Playoff final defeat, but have managed to get their hands on a bit of silverware. And here we go. Bracknell Town, your 2022 23 Barks and Bucks Men's Senior Cup final winners. Once again, on behalf of the Barks and Bucks, many, many thanks for your support this evening. And I have just been told there is live music in the front of the, the back of the stand. Right, everybody. Now, I promised you uh, I would confirm that I am here at the ground. Uh, congratulations to Bracknell. We're going to bring the camera around now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This has been our office for this evening's game. I've been your commentator, Ian Ward. I've really, really enjoyed that. Really, did. Thank you so much for getting in touch with us as well. Uh, playing your part makes such a difference. Huge congratulations uh, to Marlo. Really, really impressed me this evening. Uh, not that they need to impress me, uh, but I think they've done the entire town very proud indeed. And of course, Bracknell lifting the trophy for the first time ever. What a season it's been for both clubs both in their respective leads, making the playoffs. No promotion for either, but a sign of things to come, I certainly think so. I mean, what a house from live sport now. Till next time, everybody, thanks for watching. And of course, wherever you go, over. Win, so it's a draw the game.